How's it going, Daddy? Uh, great. I think. I don't know. This is the one tattoo I can't see, so. True. <laughs> How does it feel? My name is Alona Fitty. I live in Toronto, and I'm a tattoo artist. Tradition and culture is not static. You know, it doesn't just stay the same. It's, it's dynamic and it lives and breathes and changes with people and, and generations as times change. With every generation, there's this opportunity for evolution while still retaining authenticity. I'm a tattoo artist because I want to refer to these principles that are at the heart of our traditions. I specialize in hand poke tattooing. My tattoo work is mostly black and white, mostly illustrative uh, and graphic. It's very influenced by, you know, the culture and the music that I absorbed growing up. Some of it is, you know, very playful and some of it's kind of conceptual and weird and some of it is very spiritual and, and cultural and that part I take very seriously. Yeah, almost there. My interest in Filipino ancestral tattooing grew uh, from research for other mediums like cultural or like diasporic centered artwork. All my past work like illustration, graphic design, installation art, all of it is very influential in my work now. This is just sort of like playing around with some things, I guess, like before I started to make like an overall piece of like starting to identify, I guess, the details that I like and that I wanted to like take from my influences and put them into, into tattooing. I'm half Filipino and half English. Both of my parents are very conservative, like regardless of where, you know, they're from. So they, they're both like, like we're against like us getting tattoos. if there's any kind of like common conception of tattoos being done by hand in North America. It has to do with um, jail tattoos or, you know, like, like punk kind of like kids like stick and poking each other. But yeah, it, like it is also interesting where, you know, for it to have started to be associated with criminals or for like little kids to think that it's like so rebellious to get it. To trace that back, it's like, there had to be a degradation in how we thought of, it, of how we thought of tattoos first, because they used to be a part of pride and, and culture, and in a very integral way. I went to visit Wang Un and the Butput -But tribe in February of this year, 2018. I've been wanting to go maybe for like eight or nine years. It definitely like deepened and strengthened that interest that had already been growing to just know that um, there were still people who were practicing their ancestral tattooing. There are 7,000 islands in the Philippines and tattooing used to be very common throughout a lot of, a lot of them in a lot of communities. You decorate and you adorn things of value and things uh, with purpose. It, it is an extension to, um, to decorate the skin. You know, the way that you, you decorate something to show that you value it, um, it's the same thing for, for your body. I grew up with people from all over the world, and that was just like my norm. Like that was normal for me. I understand more and more how lucky I was to grow up with so much like Filipino friends and family that I avoided a lot of um, cultural shame. That's a distinct and recurring storyline for you know for people. It is important that Filipino culture has more 
representation and is respected and recognized for what it is because it is so beautiful and I, you know, part of what I'm doing right now it's to just reclaim that pride, to reclaim like a pride that we always had to question or aspire to something else, to be accepted or to be good enough.